beautiful Leo, welcome to my channel. This is Baba Jolie here with your Twin Flame reading for February 2022. I've already cleansed your space and have meditated on your cards. For those of you who are turning, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for all your wonderful likes, shares and subscribes. I am truly grateful for all your beautiful energy. Just a little reminder though, this is a general reading, not a one-to-one -one reading, just so you're aware. Also, please be mindful, scammers are about to pretend to be me and lots of other tarot readers. I do not do personal readings. I do not take your money, e-gifts, donations. I'm not on Facebook, WhatsApp, PayPal, Telegram or Patreon. I will never ask you for your credit card details and I will never ask you for personal details either so if anyone masquerading as me asks you for anything at all please report them or ignore them it is a scam okay let's get straight to your twin flame reading i'm going to cleanse your space hourly so please be mindful there's going to be three loud sounds let us begin Okay, my beautiful Leo, so let us see what's going on between you and your twin flame connection. The first card is your card, the second card will be your person's card, and the third card will be the unified energy between you both as we move through February. So let's see what Spirit would like to talk about. Thank you so much, Spirit guys, God angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Leo? What do they need to know regarding their twin flame connection? Okay, so we've got highs and lows for you. Thank you so much. We've got waiting game and we've got filial love. Okay. Uh, oh, they want me to go one more. So I will. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got small challenges as well going on in your twin flame connection. You may not see them as so small, uh, but let's see what is going on. Um, I'm going to get all the cards first before we start talking about the energy. Thank you so much, spirit guides. Um, we've got unexpected income for you. Thank you so much, spirit guides. Great angels. Can you please guide... We've got Toil and Labor, and we've got Mature Man. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Leo? What do they need to know? Can you please guide them for their highest good? Uh, we've got House. Okay, and let's finally get the last cards, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, Great Angels. Can you please guide my beautiful Leo? What do they need to know regarding their Twin Flame connection? Thank you so much, Spirit Guides. Okay. Thank you so much for it, guys, great angels. Okay, interesting. So um, there is some positive energy going on in your twin flame connection. Um, right now, you may feel like it's a little bit stagnant, but let's see your energy first, and then we'll talk about your person. Now, the first card we got here for you are highs and lows. OK, so this is about, you know, often that passionate, fiery energy one minute and then cold and distant the next usually kind of represents unhealed aspects of both people working through the connection. OK, so you may have been experiencing that sort of um, it's almost like love bombing each other um, when you really are connected to this person. Uh, you want to give them your all, but you may feel like um, in some way they take a step back. And then um, you feel that and then you take a step back even further and then so it begins. OK, that tends to be the twin flame connection journey. Now, if you do not know if you're in a twin flame connection, please look it up online because these readings tend to be quite detailed anyway, but I don't have time to always explain what the twin flame connection is. At grassroots, it basically means two people who are energetically charged. They are the same energy, okay? And they meet each other and they trigger aspects within themselves that have not yet been healed. And so you have a runner and a chaser. Sometimes there's two runners as well. So, uh, but then you spiritually come back towards each other. Both parties know that they've met the one. They know. OK, um, the one who runs is avoiding their energy. They're avoiding their feelings. And the one who is chasing, they know that they've met their counterpart. And that's what's so painful about the running and chasing energy. Now, what happens is as soon as the runner takes their attention, sorry, as soon as the chaser takes their attention off the runner and focuses on their own needs and their own world, and uh, you know steps back that's when the runner comes searching for you and the dynamics change it is not a game if you think about two magnets uh, they are equal in polarities they're so alike that they magnetize each other but also they remain apart 
It's almost like that push and pull. They never quite match, but both magnets, they remain apart and then they change the polarities, okay? Something small changes within each one and then we've got an energetic match, okay? So it's about the energy matching and the frequency. And as we all know, all the greatest minds of our time have, uh, you know, agreed with uh, people who are very spiritual that we are all energetic fields interacting with each other. So you may feel in moments when this person, your twin flame, comes towards you to reach out, you may not uh, trust this person or you may feel like stepping back a little bit. So whenever they message, you may not message them straight away, you may sort of take a step back. Uh, that's that push and pull that's going on in your twin flame connection. Deep down, you're looking for reciprocity. I know it's uh, it says unexpected income here, and you are f focusing on your finances, you're focusing on your career goals, and the universe is bringing you um, an extra piece of luck, actually, in February. I think that's already been mentioned in uh, your monthly reading. But what's really interesting about this, it's about give and take, okay? It's about meeting each other halfway. We've got number 27. When you reduce it, 2 plus 7 is 9, which is the hermit energy. So you may be feeling in a solitary energy, but you know your truth. And you're being very reflective over this twin flame connection. You may even be wondering if this is a karmic connection uh, because uh, of the in and out kind of energy there in this um, dynamic. Um, but also, and um, just so you're aware, um, the universe is actually putting a bit of a plot twist in here for you, in particular Leo, because I do feel like there is a new energy coming into your sphere. So there will be someone new who um, piques your curiosity when it comes to love. Now, of course, we all have free will. So if you want to be with your twin, uh, you know, of course, you will try to make it work as much as they will. It will be a reciprocal exchange. But some people, they tend to find the twin flame connection a very difficult dynamic. So uh, and there's a lot of waiting. OK, this person is keeping you waiting. We got the waiting game here. Um, so uh, you may take a step back and seek love elsewhere, not because you want to, but because you feel forced to. Um, but I feel like this is about you focusing on yourself and also recognizing that you bring a lot to the table when it comes to love. You have so much to offer, okay? You are, uh, you know, someone who brings um, light into the world. Leo, I always talk about your shine. It is one of your um, special skills that you were given in this lifetime. Uh, also, I feel you are deserving of the love that you truly um, desire. You're not, they just said these words, you're not a beggar. You're not a beggar, okay? That's absolutely true, you're not a beggar. You're not here to chase after somebody. Um, that's what you may have put a stop to that, withdrawn from this twin flame connection. Um, what they're giving me here is that um, you've waited a long time for this person and unless they come to you right in a reciprocal manner and they show action as well as words, um, then I feel like you're wise enough to know that this person is in a cycle of uh, sort of coming on in and it not being sustainable at this time. Now, also, it's really interesting um, because if you really look closely, and I've never noticed it before in this particular deck, but if you look really closely at your unified energy card, this is house, okay? If you look really closely, magnified in the background is exactly the same house. Okay, so I feel like this is about getting your house in order um, financially, you, my beautiful Leo, um, and getting your goals and your dreams, your personal goals um, met. Um, but also, I feel like this is about building security. The universe is going to bring you a surprise in February, um, and this is to do with your work situation. Um, but I also feel like you are going to be surprised by this person's actions. So we'll go and see what that means in a moment. Um, we've got the snake, okay? Now this is a Lenormand deck, and the Lenormand deck is um, by Lumucci Design. The snake represents hidden, the hidden, okay? Uh, it doesn't mean, uh, I mean, How can I put that? Uh, so it can mean, you know, that... Now, don't shoot the messenger when I say this. It can mean that sometimes... As much as you love this person, my beautiful Leo, sometimes you try to convince yourself that it's over, it's done, and that you don't love this person anymore, okay? It's not that you're lying to yourself, you're trying to process a lot of feelings, and some of those feelings you feel either neglected by this person or you're trying to disconnect from this person, so it's almost like you're trying to tell yourself so many times, you know what? Maybe this person's a karmic. Maybe there's no such thing as twin flame. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe this, you know, I feel like it's not that you're trying to deceive yourself. I feel like you're trying to work things out 
and move past this connection because it has left you waiting and aching. They're giving me the word aching. There's been a real longing in this relationship between you and this person. Now, the snake also represents really positive energy. So although some people see it as a negative entity, snakes are really about rejuvenation. You know, they tend to shed their uh, their skin in order to re revitalize themselves, renew themselves. And um, they're just saying the OB, the OB. So either it is the OB, maybe your initials are OB or the OB. I mean, whenever I think OB, I think of Obi-Wan Kenobi, the wise one, right? <laughs> so it could be that. I'm not really sure. Please take that as it resonates. Um, I mean, it could be a nickname. So please take it as it resonates. It's not going to resonate for everyone. If it if that part does not resonate for you, it doesn't mean it's not your reading. It just means that you want that person to pay close attention to the reading as their attention may have wavered. It's number seven. So this is about challenges and overcoming them and being victorious because it is a chariot card energy. Now, this, this energy can mean that you and this person can have a successful union, but uh, there's some sort of uh, control issues going on within the union. So, uh, and someone is avoiding their feelings. Remember, when you take a step back and you're trying to, um, you're on the right path in the twin flame journey. Whenever you take a step back, um, you actually activate them to come seeking you. Um, but how can I put that? It's almost like you're at that convincing stage where you're like, this isn't a thing. Maybe I just felt this. Uh, you both felt this, okay? Um, I feel like you are in, I would almost say that you're entering into the runner phase yourself because the dynamic switch, they come seeking you and you become the runner for a short time. And then energetically, you both come into the same energetic sphere for a match. But it can take a long time. That's why some people give up on the journey because they're like, you know what? I'm... I'm worth better than that. Uh, it depends on how you are in the moment and it depends on the journey that you're taking with your twin flame. If anyone is narcissistic or you know verbally, physically abusive, unkind, of course I would never condone you going back to any relationship like that. But twin flame energy doesn't tend to be like that. It tends to be more avoidant. Okay, so just be aware of the dynamics that you've got with your uh, connection. Now they keep showing me, um, well, I keep getting like an itchy nose and it's not really my energy. So uh, whenever I'm given an itchy nose, it means an argument. Okay. So either you've argued with this person or you tend to, um, you and this person tend to, you know, it goes well for the first like couple of messages. And then all of a sudden you start to, um, be a little bit bitey towards each other, a little bit sharp. Um, I mean, it may be banter, but it, sometimes it steps over the mark and it can wound. I feel like you and this person may have that kind of dynamic going on because I, the, the itch is now gone now that I've mentioned it, okay? Now, this is their energy. Um, we've got the waiting game. Um, now, I'm going to do a Celtic cross. I was, I was, I wanted to see which way Spirit wanted me to go on this connection reading because I was very uncertain. I'm not normally uncertain about the um, spreads that I do, but my guides wanted me to hold off and see the energy, how it flows. So I was going to pull some cards in your area to see how things are going, but they actually want me to do a Celtic cross. So I'm gonna do that, okay? But we got the waiting game for your person. Um, now it says, how long will you continue to wait? If you find you're not receiving what you want from your twin, it's time to practice self-love and walk away. That's when you actually activate uh, the twin flame connection. So Leo, if you felt like you have taken a real step back because you've waited a long time for this person and this person starts to coming towards you, they're going to start to feel the same way as you as well and take a step back. But I'm going to see what this person's been waiting for. Why? Um, and why they've kept you waiting. What's going on there? Thank you so much, Spirit Guys, Great Angels. The Queen of Cups. Um, this person has um, is very chaotic kind of person. They're starting to learn to love themselves fully and feel comfortable in their own skin. The Wheel of Fortune indicates this is faded. This is a faded connection and that they're on the right path at the moment to... Um, yeah, they're releasing a lot of baggage, maybe even from childhood, this person. So I feel like this person had a lot of um, issues... 
this person has a lot of uh, they've got control issues as well but this person there's a bit of self-loathing going on with your twin flame this person tends to really hate on themselves and they project a lot of their energy of feeling like low self-worth or low self-esteem um, so if they've tried to make you feel lesser of course i'm not here to give excuses by the way i'm not here to say oh they did that you did this you know oh poor you or oh poor them i'm not here to uh take sides i'm here to understand the energy so i can transmute an outcome for you okay the magician in the reverse tends to talk about someone who's very scattered in their energy someone who wasted a lot of time and recognizes that there is unfulfilled potential in this connection but they have been very uh you know disruptive in their energy this person sometimes feels a bit out of control when they get in their emotions okay now we all have different uh ways of looking at things some people are really comfortable with their emotions and some people are really not um so um this person with the magician in the reverse they've tried to avoid um and they have tried to it's almost like this person did not plan to fall in love this person did not think about the future this person tends to procrastinate a lot in their world okay uh, so whether it's career sometimes as well or friendships this person sits back they feel like they got time it's like peter pan syndrome with this person again male or uh, male or female not a gender specific reading it's about the energy this person is just coasting okay that's what i'm getting here um sometimes i feel like this person doesn't mean it okay with the um the We've got the Ten of Wands in the reverse. So this has been a very long, hard slog for this person. And this person is taking time out to really focus on themselves and love themselves a bit fuller. The Queen of Cups is someone who is having compassionate, compassion for themselves. So uh, there's a lot of self-care going on here. This person is healing whatever it is that needs to be healed in their life. And we've also got the Wheel of Fortune. So if you haven't heard from your person for a little while and they normally reach out with a message, this person, you know, destiny is making them really look at themselves uh, and really look at where this is a destined connection. And that, you know, when you think about um, love, we always think about the cup of love that we have for ourselves. And if we've put self-loathing, insecurity, um, you know, a trauma from childhood or uh, ancestral wounding in that cup, we actually give it to the other person to drink from. OK, so it is, a, you know, a, a projected energy. So uh, that that also means that there may have been some similar journey through childhood that you and your person had and you've triggered each other. But this person is looking uh, at calming their energy. This person, I feel like, is really working hard to try and come into some sort of balance. Uh, I mean, this person is receiving karma as well, okay? I'm just gonna pull a card on, uh, before I go to a Celtic cross for you, uh, just see how you're feeling about this journey so far, my beautiful Leo, before I go on in their energy. Whoa, <laughs> I gotta go get that card, one moment please. Um, let's see, oh, I'm loving that. We got your card, we got the, the sun card here. So you're trying to remain positive, you're shining your light, you're just being you. OK, you're this is a perfect energy when you are just being you trying to be really positive and sort of look to the future with light and keep focused on your your goals and your dreams. Um, I feel this is when things start to flourish. OK, um, you're just beaming your light. You're just being you, which is a positive energy for you. OK, again, that's why the dynamic has changed. You've taken a step back. Um, and if you uh, if you feel tempted to message this person, I feel like you are trying to restrain yourself in some way. Um, now, we'll see if they're coming on into talk as well, but we got toil and labor. So this person really is working on themselves and this person is very independent. There's something here as well about the cat there. This person may also be a Leo or have strong Leo in their chart. Um, I mean, there may have even been. Uh, a, a, OK. Thank you so much. I'm sure grateful. I'm not really here to. Um, I, I don't really hate on people's energy. I try to understand why a person is the way that they are, because if we understood each other a little bit better, then we would communicate a little bit better and then we would not misconstrue situations and end up hurting people. Um, so but they're just giving me this energy of alley cat. Now, either there was a joke between you and your person about alley cat, or maybe that's how you reference this person. I'm not really sure. Um, an alley cat doesn't mean that this person is sort of like 
cheating or going around behind people's back. It can mean that they're fiercely independent and very tough because of the journey that they've had. They've had to learn to survive in difficult circumstances. So, you know, you whenever you think about an alley cat, you think about that bruiser type cat that's really gone through the wars in life and they've got into lots of scraps um, or they've uh, had a very difficult journey to this point in their path. So um, I feel like this person has had a difficult journey um, and they've had to fend for themselves. Either this person um, felt a lot of responsibility from a young age or they've gone through some sort of trauma that they've buried. Um, I mean, it's number 38 when you reduce it. Three plus eight is 11. So that's the justice card. This person is receiving their karma. This person is trying to find a solution to come into balance. This, this person is making better choices now. Uh, I mean, we got the mature man. Again, male or female, not a gender specific reading. It's about the energy. There is maturity here, okay? And we've got the ship number three, which is journey. And this person, it's almost like they, they really, their emotions, they are very, very deep. This person feels swamped with their emotions when they try to open up. That's why sometimes when they try to speak, nothing comes out. This person, it's almost like it gets choked up in their throat. And instead, they would rather make a joke. That's, or, or, or uh, and it's kind of like, a, the word they're giving me is pithy, pithy. I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, pithy, I'm not really sure what that means, but the energy that I'm getting from it, I mean, I know a lot of words, but I can't know all the words in the dictionary, and they're just throwing that word at me, so, um, pithy, I feel like it means it's kind of like sarcastic, maybe, um, yeah, um, so, it's number three, which means this person is working on themselves. They're being better to themselves. They're being more healthy in their energy. Uh, and they're looking at settling down. This person is really looking at their emotions and how they feel unanchored. Um, so I do feel like this person is in some way um, being a better version of themselves is how I'm going to put it. Now, the unified energy between you and this person, we've got filial love. Okay, and it says, don't lock into tunnel vision on romantic love as the only possibility for the situation. Some twin flames can be better off as friends. Now, it doesn't mean that you and your person are going to be friends and that's it. It can mean that you and your person need to make a solid foundation of friendship before it turns into romantic energy. Because sometimes the passion, whilst it's wonderful and sometimes it's just off the charts magnetic, it can sort of cloud vision. Uh, and by that, I mean both of you see an idealized version of what you want the other person to be and not see each other truly at grassroots. So I feel this is your twin flame really needs to look at you in that way as well. And because I feel like there is an energy where this person sees a lot of chemistry between you and them. And I feel like this person has to work through their emotions and open up a little bit more about uh, their foundation so that they can build um, you know something stable with you in, for the future we've also got small challenges okay and it says here no relationship is perfect and when things go awry and they will because that is just life uh, don't be so quick to think that the relationship is over you are learning and growing I feel either you or your person has learnt in life uh, when the going gets tough um, sometimes situations um, or people leave or have left in your life so I feel like there is a fight or flight energy in this twin flame connection it's almost like as soon as someone says something either pithy whichever whatever that word means or they say something that hurts it's almost like shut down shut down that hurt it's over rather than okay what was that about why did they say that it's only about two or three days later when it may be on each other's mind where you start to unpack what happened but it's almost like the shield goes up straight away so there's a lot of um armor and when you got two people wearing really tough armor and you know uh, defending themselves against each other um then you actually never really truly let the other person in easier said than done i know my gosh i've been there so you know it is about breaking down the walls brick by brick and having that that's where that filial love comes on in, you know, if you take it slow, like a friendship, you know, um, then it can um, sort of, it's almost like you unlearn the pattern that you and your person have got into of sort of being completely like sort of um, 
how can I put that, unavoidably attracted to each other and magnetic and passionate and wild and um, inseparable. And then all of a sudden it's like separation. It, it's, it's tough, it's very hard. I feel like you and your person need to unlearn that pattern by starting with a foundation of friendship. Uh, not to mean that it's not gonna go into a high level commitment, but let's see. Uh, we've got number five, uh, and this is mature man. Again, not a gender specific reading. There is maturity in this connection. I feel like there is more action in the future in this connection because the masculine energy is to do, to take action. And I feel like uh, if you're dealing with a masculine counterpart, or even if you are the masculine counterpart, I feel like there is a maturity. There is, um, you know, I feel like this person has um, been very independent, is uh, no, getting more knowledge. There's loads of books there. As you can see, there's two lamps there. The closest one to him is lit really brightly. So this person is having a major awakening and you can see the other one is a little bit dimming. So I feel, Leo, this is your energy that's dimming. It's almost like you're taking a step back. You're starting to not believe in the connection any further. And this person, as you can see, the finger, one finger is out. This person is ready to settle with the one. Okay, so I feel like this person is maturing. It's number five, which is the Hierophant, which is about learning. This person may have also gone to counseling in some way and or been looking online of how to uh, become a bit more spiritual, a um, bit more uh, sort of connected to source energy. Uh, the Hierophant is often the marriage card. So this person is ready to settle. Um, we've also got house and it's number 20. Number 20 is the judgment card, which, and that's in the major arcanas, which is the card of second chances. So you and this person can have a second chance. You can be together, um, but there is, I mean, look, it's gated property there. So um, it needs to be, uh, both of you need to be aware that in order to heal, um, first of all, you got to heal by yourself. Okay, and it may feel like a very painful solitary energy, but twin flame energy does get magnetized back towards each other. And I do feel like this person will reach out um, to have a second chance with you. We'll see if it's in February, but let's see what's going on there. I feel like there's a, there is a major awakening here going on and house represents um, the hidden sometimes. So I feel like uh, the hidden feelings come to light, but also I feel deep down there is a desire for security, okay? And for a second chance between you both. But the judgment card can be a fork in the road. So there is a choice and there's always a choice because we all have free will. You're at a fork in the road. In order to reach for a new life, things must be purged. So if you want to reach for that new life together, the thing that must be purged is the pattern, the cycle that you and this person tend to gravitate and get caught up in. And I feel like it really so, uh, starts with that solid foundation, the, the, the friendship. Now, a lot of people are gonna be like rejecting that straight away. I don't wanna be just this person's friend. It's gonna be too painful. Uh, but I feel you both can come to an understanding. Um, I actually feel like this person doesn't want to just be your friend. I feel like they want to be more than just your friend. Um, and we've got um, number two, which is the clover. So this is again, uh, the wheel of fortune stepping in. This is luck is on your side. So you and your person, it is a faded destined relationship and this person knows it. This person is working on themselves though, whilst you are taking a step back to focus on your career. Um, and I feel like you are rejuvenating yourself. When this person comes back into your energetic sphere, um, they're gonna be like, damn, Leo, you've, you've changed. I feel like you are revamping yourself in some way. Not that you, um, you know, are, it, you're not happy with yourself or your life. I feel like you're changing your life around and you're bossing up in your world. Um, but that's not the thing that this person is attracted to. They're attracted to your beautiful, warm heart. They're attracted to your light, especially when people are wounded or in some way, um, they're, they had some sort of trauma. We tend to trauma bond with another person. So uh, I feel like energetically they've come towards you because your energy is golden, Leo. So I feel uh, sometimes they feel soothed in your energy, but you're not here to be someone's emotional crutch, okay? So they have to sort out their side of the street and you'll be sorting yours out. And I feel like that's what's happening right now. Um, but it's a faded energy reading um, and a faded uh, sort of connection between you and this person. It's number two, so I feel like there's a lot of hidden mysterious energy where sometimes you and this person go hiding yourselves a little bit because there's fear. I mean, when we're all about to open up in a vulnerable way and say, this is my heart, 
it beats only for you. I, I just have love for you and I just want to take this journey of life with you. That's a really difficult thing to expose. And when the other person's not in a, a space to accept it, it can feel really damaging and rejection is very, very difficult, of course. So we build walls and I feel you and this person have got into a cycle of kind of opening up and rejecting, opening up and rejecting at different points and both of you being in control of that at different points. Um, I feel more that you have been the one who's been very open and I feel like you're the one who's always been giving because we've got that. I feel like you, you're always the one who's been giving of your energy to this person. You may have even been an over giver, but I feel like you're learning that lesson now. That's all part of the um, cycle. Okay. And we've got number 16, the star. Star energy is about healing, but also this means that this is, uh, when you get the star energy, this is about um, the stars are aligning to bring you what you and your person um, are hoping for, because this card is about faith, hope, and belief. Okay. I do feel like you and this person are thinking about each other. Um, and I do feel like both of you are embracing the newness of yourselves, a better version of yourselves, and you're both in a, a, a cycle of embracing growth and uh, clarity about this connection. Uh, we've got number 16 there, which is a tower energy. Now, what's very important about the tower energy, a lot of people get scared of the tower. They're like, oh my gosh, the whole thing's going to crumble down, okay? But you're already in a separated state. So if you think about it, you're in a stalemate. OK, now the tower represents prison, a stalemate position where nothing is happening. You, there is no movement or growth in the connection. And in the traditional right away to row, you have a lightning bolt that hits the tower and it exposes, uh, you know, the whole tower and it goes on fire. It becomes really uncomfortable. And the two figures, they leap into the unknown in the tower, in the right away to row, um, because it's better to take a leap of faith than it is to stay stuck in that energy. So I feel like you and your person, there's going to be a lightning bolt moment, an awakening moment in February, where you both recognize you want to speak to each other. You want to, so I do feel like you, your person is going to reach out because we've got um, an energy of doing occurring here. Um, and I feel like this person, um, we're going to go deeper and find out what else is coming, but uh, I'm just going to, I feel like the universe is intervening to bring um, the energy of coming out of that stagnant energy, okay, um, or that uncertain energy. Now, I'm just going to quickly do a Celtic cross. I'm using the wonderful uh, Storm and Tarot. Uh, by Maya De Angelis there, sorry, by um, David De Angelis there. Um, now that's interesting, I've said Maya De Angelis, so uh, perhaps that is um, an important uh, text that you're reading right now, um, or um, it's relevant in some way for you. Um, as I said, I'm reading only the uprights in this deck, apart from the challenge positions, just so that I can see what's coming towards you in February. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, for Angels. Can you please guide? They want one more in this position, so I'll give it. Okay, interesting. You get the Nine and the Ten of Swords. This is this sharp energy that you experience with each other. Uh, oh, okay, one more. Thank you so much, Spirit Guides, for Angels. Eight of Wands. And there is the action. Okay, the Eight of Wands is the journey, your advice, the star, beautiful energy, I mean, the chariot, you're moving on, Ace of Pentacles, that's when you give, um, and right, okay, so this person that you're dealing with, uh, they want me to go one more. This person that you're dealing with, yeah, uh, this person that you're dealing with, because you're taking a step back, that's when they come towards you. Now, of course, you don't want to wait for that position so that someone, you have to force them into like a position to 
come towards you because you've taken a full step back. But it looks like that's what's happening here. But anyway, we've got the Three of Cups. This is the heart of the matter for your Twin Flame connection. Now, the heart of the matter here, I mean, Three of Cups basically means friendship. OK, uh, so I feel like at the grassroots of your um, I mean, look up the, the meaning of the card. Three of Cups is about friendship, but it's also about celebrating each other as friends. OK, so I feel like the, 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 the foundation of your relationship should be built on uh, friendship because they're giving it a second time here in this connection. Um, now, also, um, there may have been some sort of interference in a connection, um, either. Um, I don't mean I mean. There could have been a third party uh, situation going on there because sometimes three of cups and three of pentacles can mean that. Um, but what I'm feeling more than that, I mean, it doesn't always mean someone cheated on you. It can mean that there was ulterior exterior situation like this person focused on their career or you did or um, this person was influenced by someone close to them to not go after a, a relationship um, at that time so please take it as it resonates uh, they're showing me the snake here again okay so I feel like it's a it's a rejuvenation of friendship I feel like there needs to be a solid foundation of friendship here in this connection what is crossing you in this person four of wands reunion arguments I mean the four of wands in this position you read both sides okay so the the four of wands in the reverse is about arguments um, you know separation leaving and then reuniting again with the uh, four of wands in the upright there. So I feel, as you can see, there will be a reunion between you and your person. It's not over yet, this connection. Um, but this is about celebrating each other again. This is about friendship circles, okay? The four of wands is also about a new creative phase. So there will be actually a new sort of um, phase between you and this person coming together, celebrating friendship. I mean, again, please look up the meanings of the cards because everything they keep giving me is about a solid foundation now you know the four of wands tends to be the halfway to marriage card so you and this person you can make a uh, sort of a commitment towards each other that is deeper uh, where you settle down you move in with each other or um, you know take the next stage in life together but there has to be that solid foundation also if you're in separation at the moment I feel like you will be coming together at some point in February um, I mean there may be a very hard conversation Let's put it that way. Uh, at the bottom, we've got Queen of Pentacles, and this is an energy of settling down, nesting. This is about fertility and domesticity. It's also about being determined and grounded. You're very loyal, my beautiful Leo. At the heart, at the deep down, there is loyalty in this connection. I mean, there is uh, the potential to settle down and multiply. For example, have children if that's what you want to have. But this is about hard work, okay? Uh, the Queen of Earth works really hard to affect change and plant roots as you can see she is like roots so this is about stability so this connection can become something very stable but it is going to be hard work okay and both of you need to be committed to that in order to um, move past the challenges that you have before you okay so I'm not going to lie to you it's not going to be all unicorns and rainbows uh, but it, it will require hard work what is being left behind in this connection seven of wands seven of wands is defensiveness okay especially if you both feel like uh, or you feel my beautiful Leo that you have to defend yourself against this person or you, it feels like a battle sometimes but the seven of wands tends to mean as well this is something that is worth fighting for um, but sometimes the fight crosses over into arguments okay as you can see it's a bit of a battle this person is defending themselves but what they are indicating with the seven of wands is that you and this person are capable of going the distance of persevering and being with each other if you hold true to the vision and believe that you can be together and that you can overcome obstacles now what is above you the death card now the death card literally means transformation change so there has to be a change in the cycle between you and this person if you ever think of like that phoenix rising from the ashes the phoenix isn't sort of destroyed by an ending it is only enhanced and strengthened and rises up despite it so if you do want to be with this person you and this person can actually overcome the challenges and rise up there can be a new version of this connection but things need to change radically old habits need to be released and both of you need to make room for something greater uh, because you're both just the energy uh, it's just getting in the way at the moment 
um, of the connection. Now, they're just asking me to look at this card closely. Now, they're showing me ants. You know what? Ants and keys. Ants and keys have come up quite a lot in the last couple of days in readings. Now, ants are about strength, about working together, um, coming to each other's aid whenever is necessary. You know, whenever you think about ants, they actually help each other out. They build something strong and solid. They're very, they, they lift their weight. <laughs> so I feel like if you and your person, uh, I mean, I feel like you've put a lot of your energy, time, care, love, and nurture into this relationship. This person is about to start pulling their weight in this connection, I feel, and would is, is wanting to work on it. They're working on themselves currently, but they are highlighting the key. And the key is in the sacral. Sacral chakra. I'm just getting this energy of the chakras right now. One moment, please. They're asking me to really look because when I mentioned sacral, they, my guide said, no, really look. So, I mean, I feel like it's above the base, but if it's, because they're not really giving me an absolute indication. The base chakra is about building a solid foundation. And then as we go up, it's about, well, what can I, what do I desire? What do I want? And then it's, what can I do? What can I do about things? So I feel like that area is starred for you. So I feel like there is, there is basically a, There is a choice here, which is, should I stay or should I go? And that's your call, my beautiful Leo. Um, because in the near future, we do have a, a very interesting conundrum. We've got the Nine of Swords, which is a lot of anxiety, or uh, which is, you know, the Nine of Swords is an interesting one because at its grassroots, it is about anxiety or, you know, feeling like grief depression within the connection and I definitely feel that um, in this connection but it's also about shifting negative self-talk the way that and, and it's also to have a call to faith when you get this card so I feel like um, your counterpart has really had a lot of self-loathing and that may have projected onto you my beautiful Leo so if you felt like this it's almost like you may have felt like cursed in this relationship it's almost like you met your twin. It is both a blessing and a curse. Okay, I feel like that's about to change because it's it's crossed by the Eight of Wands there. But I feel like there is an ending before there is a beginning here. Uh, we got a Ten of Swords. As you can see, there's two figures there. Um, sort of. It's almost like they're breaking apart. Um, but what I feel more is that the idea of the relationship that you have is breaking apart. Okay, the Ten of Swords can be about a graceful ending as well. It can be like, let's decide to just part. But because we got the Eight of Wands there, it is to part to go on the journey. Okay, um, the Ten of Swords is like clearing way for a new beginning. Okay, um, and it can just simply mean that you are actually um, having an epiphany, releasing an old way of thinking, starting to fo focus on yourself. OK, uh, because basically when you get to a 10, it's the end of something and the only way is up. So uh, it is a point of recovery and forgiveness or moving on. Now, we do not forgive another person just to sort of let them off the hook. We actually forgive to lighten our own karmic load so that we can move past and have a freer energy in order to uh, experience life. But if we carry that baggage and we've got the Ten of Wands there somewhere, where is it? It's on the outcome position. The Ten of Wands, which has shown up twice now in your reading. So I feel like this person that you're dealing with is releasing a lot of baggage. And so are you. You're releasing the cycle because you've taken a step back. You've broken the chain. That's what you've done. Now we've got the Eight of Wands here, which means there is action. So as soon as it has come to an end, as soon as you and this person are no longer talking or you are no longer giving your 
thoughts, your attention to this connection, your person changes. The switch happens in the magnets. And then this person comes to seek you. Um, when you get the eight of wands, this is about news arriving. This is about quick messaging back and forth, back and forth. So I feel like there will be an exchange of messages in the near future with you and this person. And they're quite passionate. Okay. Very passionate messages. So, I mean, this person may reach out for Valentine's Day or just after to see what you're up to, okay? Um, but I feel with the Eight of Wands, it's going to be something that is quite, uh, a lot. it talks about chemistry, okay? Wands are about chemistry. So I feel like this person is going to um, send you like, you know, cheeky messages, that sort of thing. Um, now, the advice to each other in this moment is the star energy. So this is about healing. Both of you, you want to heal this. Both of you, you know, actually wish for each other wish for it to be different, wish for it to be better. So also this is a card of hope, but most importantly, this is a card of clarity. So whether you want to be with your twin uh, or you decide it's too difficult at this time to continue on this twin flame journey, because I feel like you have taken a step back. I feel like you're doing your own healing. You're focusing on your own path and you've gained clarity. Uh, but in that, you'll actually see that your person comes towards you. They seek you. They become the, the, the chaser and you become the runner. Uh, but the star energy indicates that both of you are healing in a separate energy right now. So you are on the right path in terms of twin flame connection. The external circumstances is the chariot. You both can overcome the obstacles in order to have a successful union. The chariot card literally means victory, success, okay? And you got this number seven to start with. So I feel like uh, you are both on a journey of discovery. Uh, you're both reaching for something greater, something more authentic. And when you both met each other first, you were not in that state to accept the connection as it was. So I feel both of you have gone through a real test of faith when it comes to uh, the connection. You may have been very, very confused, my beautiful Leo, about what has been going on in this connection, especially since you were aware that this person was the one. And you're like, well, how, how can they not feel it? How is it I'm only feeling this? Um, you were not the only person feeling this, but this person um, lost their way on their journey. They feel, This person has a lot of regret, actually. Uh, this person lost a bit of direction in life and uh, kept you waiting. But I mean, time waits for no person. So I don't feel like you're the sort of person to keep waiting for this one. Um, you've been focusing on your own needs there. Now, the hope and the fear is the Ace of Pentacles, to start from the ground up. The Ace of Pentacles is a divinely uh, intervened, well, it's an intervention by spirit to bring something solid. So the Ace of Pentacles does mean that there is, a, you know, investment in the relationship, but it has to start from the very beginning. Remember, you're not starting from scratch. You're starting from experience. But the Ace of Pentacles tells you and your person that there needs to be um, a commitment, a reciprocal commitment where both people put energy in and you, you start from the very beginning. Friendship. Okay, I mean, there's another cat there. Can you see that in the clouds commanding? Beautiful cat right there. So either you're dealing with someone who's got strong Leo in their charts as well as you. Um, doesn't have to be sun, moon or rising. Okay, also, I mean, they're showing me that this connection, it is written. It is written. It is divinely guided. Okay, it's already written in the stars how this twin flame connection is going to go. Um, the fear here is... You putting all of your energy into the connection and this person not um, investing and vice versa, okay? It's almost like all that energy, all that time that was spent on this connection, there's a fear here that it was all for nothing. It was all for naught, okay? Um, now, the outcome position is a difficult one. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's interesting. Uh, the Ten of Wands is there is a lot of baggage in this connection. The Ten of Wands is about exhaustion. You're fed up with this, Leo, okay? And I feel you're releasing anything that no longer serves you in this connection. And I feel like it's been very emotionally draining. So you've taken a step back. I feel like you're getting back into your own life again. <clears throat> Excuse me. But as you can see, that's when this person will be led to the stairs up uh, to elevation. And as I said, when you get to a point like the Ten of Wands or the Ten, because you've got two Tens here, uh, when you get to the breaking point in a connection, it breaks things wide open so that people can see what is truly going on. And that's the point of 
that's the point of epiphany where things start to change okay now we've got the two of pentacles which is about balance and harmony it can also mean that this relationship could go either way you or this person depending on the investment given but balance is what is called for two people coming together in reciprocal energy i mean you're making your way up from the ace of pentacles to the two of pentacles there so i feel like it's about finding uh, and being adaptable with each other finding that in-between point whenever especially with a twin flame connection there tends to be a lot of pressure on a twin flame connection because we love with wild abandon and um, when your twin runs for example it feels it's the end of the world it feels like if the rejection is so painful so I'm sending you a huge hug out there because I've, I've been there I know what that feels like but also it's about having that that balance of um, knowing that you don't need this person, you want this person in your life, you know that this person is instrumental to your journey. Um, and it's about both of you sort of learning to give and take and have a, an element of independence and at the same time, um, you know, coming together. There's a real sort of There's a real energy here of movement forward. There are infinite possibilities for you and this person to come together. Uh, now, they're just giving me a reference of a film, which is Back to the Future. <laughs> um, so, um, I mean, either Back to the Future is, a, a, is relevant to your reading in some way, or it's like, maybe you just watched the film or there was an advert for the film or something like that. Please take it as it resonates or maybe there's some sort of connection between you and your twin to Back to the Future. I mean, Back to the Future kind of suggests that um, the future is already written and maybe you, uh, you and this person both feel like if only you could go back in time, you'd be able to change your present and your future uh, based on different decisions uh, made in that moment. Um, but yeah, when things feel so heavy and intense in a twin flame connection, um, sometimes it may be difficult to remember the joy or find that playful spirit that you both once had because then there's a lot of expectation on the connection of where it needs to go. It doesn't need to go anywhere. You just both need to exist in each other's energy in that present moment and enjoy each other's company because when we start to put pressure and expectation on the connection, then we start to become out of balance because my expectation may be different than your expectation. You're still wanting the relationship to go in the same in the same way, but when we start to put expectation on things, we start to start trying to control things, okay? Just be aware of that. And if any cross watchers are watching as well, that's an important message for everybody in, in general, not just um uh, so we've got the Six of Swords here, which is a rite of passage. This was meant to happen. It was always meant to be this way. The Six of Swords, though, does mean that there is a change in thinking in order to gain greater wisdom. At grassroots, this card can mean a necessary transition. And we've got the transition card right up here. So this relationship can change and be something more uh, intense and fulfilling and loving. But there needs to be change. Uh, Six of Swords can also mean that, you know, you and this person are passing a test. Do you still want to be with each other? And if you do, um, have you noticed the red flags and how you should love yourself fully and have a strong, healthy boundary? Not a brick wall, but a healthy boundary that says, no, you can't treat me like that. Or no, that's not acceptable behavior. Or do you treat yourself in a way where you say, this is how I like to be loved. You love me like the way that I expect respect. And, um, you know, then we got a deal. So people normally teach each other how they like to be treat it okay so for example if you let someone away with bad behavior the first time maybe even the second time uh, you're teaching a person that they're allowed to just come on in and do that okay because you still accept them back at each time that's the cycle okay so I feel like you're changing the cycle now there is a choice here with that six of swords which is to move out of calm uh, you know tumultuous energy tough emotions into calmer waters spirit is guiding you but there's also a choice of walking away from the union. Um, we also, because I feel with the Ten of Wands and, um, you know, you're undecided whether you want to walk away from this fully, Leo. Should I stay? Should I go? I feel like this energy is push and pull for you right now. You don't want to, but I feel like you feel ha you have to. Then we've got a King of Wands, which is a masculine energy to take action, to do. So 
I feel like this person then comes on in and takes action. Okay, whether it's, again, it's not a gender specific reading, but I feel like then there is action. After you and this person have taken a, a, a separate sort of stance and there has been separation, you and this person come back on in together. Uh, I do feel like this person is being spiritually influenced, is aligning themselves with their true self. And I do feel like this person is going to confidently come in and start messaging you in February. Um, I mean... I hope you can see that as you can see there's like um this figure is connected to a child there that is growing so i feel like it's their inner child is sort of learning and growing and maturing because everybody you know none of us came here with a map of how to do life we just don't know we're just acting and reacting to circumstance that we find ourselves in so we have to remember that although we're in these grown-ass bodies you know we're paying bills, we're navigating, trying to keep a job or get a job if we don't have one. Uh, we're trying to navigate a major pandemic. We're trying to do life. There's so much information and stress and everything bombarded us day by day. We got to remember, we're still all that little child inside that, you know, had great dreams or uh, imagine things will be different or imagine things will be um, just as good as they are. In some circumstances, people are going to be like, yeah, I achieved my, my dreams. Um, but we have to honor that little child within us all and love it a little bit harder, especially during these times. OK, so um, I'm just going to pull one more card. Can you please clarify the final position? We got the eight of wands. So they're showing me again for the near future. Um, you are going to hear from your person. It's going to be a quick message exchange from this person. Um, I do feel like this person uh, now either you or them are traveling or will travel. To each other perhaps but i feel like there's messaging going on because this is about news and messages okay so i do feel like this person is going to take action by messaging you it's going to be a passionate message it's going to be something that is a bit tongue-in-cheek is what i'm getting but uh, you and this person you can create something wonderful but there needs to be a solid grounding foundation now um oh no they don't want me to go there uh i'm gonna get you a um a heart before we leave as a final, I'm gonna go with that one. Let's see, oh, did you hear that sound? I'm not sure what that sound was, but um, uh, yeah. I'm gonna to have to check the, the, the camera to see, because I heard it behind me, so I'm not really sure. But anyway, um, now the um, message you got here is, you will be graced by the presence of a loved one soon. You will be graced by the presence of a loved one soon. So, Okay, that really connects to uh, the reading that you got so far for the Twin Flame connection. Um, I hope something resonates in this reading for you. I will be also doing a free uh, competition for one lucky subscriber to win a free personal reading. All you have to do to win that is put this sentence in the comments box below. I am loved. Okay, and I'll gravitate towards one lucky subscriber on the 28th of February. I will not know that person's name until my guides give me the name on the 28th of February. Okay, so just so you're aware. I'll upload a video just to let you all know who won as well. So you know it's me telling you and not scammers. Okay, uh, I hope something does resonate. If it does, please like and subscribe to my channel. Completely free for you. All you have to do is press the little bell that lets you know when I update my next message. It lets me know that you resonate with the reading, which is very important for me. Thank you so much, my beautiful Leo. Love and light.